What is up, guys? It is the sports Sir Bradley Walker, and welcome back to the Walker Report. Your tree was on vacation last week, uh, so I am back. Um, and guys, I just want to let you know that this show is being aired on In the Zone Sports Radio, as it's part of In the Zone Sports, part of NGSC Sports. Guys, please remember the website. It's ngscsports.com for all your current sports content. We are also being aired on Coast to Coast Entertainment. And guys, we are sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com and is the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you, adding comfort to your life. And guys, remember Zen Spaces begins with you. Be kind to yourself and one another. And guys, I was told today that the only, they only service this the St. Petersburg, Florida area. Uh, the Clearwater and Tampa areas at the present time are too far away. Uh, for her so she wanted me to let you guys know that it's just servicing the um st petersburg area uh of that guys real quick uh i'm going to bring on my co-host lewis good evening sir good evening brother uh just real quick i don't know if you guys know or following a local story here in the state of florida uh there was a couple um a young couple a young lady was killed uh the guy that did the murder brian laudry has been confirmed dead by the fbi yes uh gabby i think her name was gabby i can't remember her last name off the top right. of my head but yeah she's uh, she's in my area actually from long island yeah they confirmed that he, that he died so two young people very very young that should not have died the way that they did and obviously he uh I, we don't know what's gonna we don't know what happened to her now that he died so there's no i don't know what who did what or what they did but non-sports related i wanted to report that i just saw that on youtube before i got yeah. on here uh and being that it happened here in my state i wanted to kind of let people know of course uh, locally what is going on uh, like i said guys i was on vacation last week um uh where baseball was almost at the world series wrapping up the astros could yeah. clinch the uh pennant tomorrow the braves could clinch tonight in los angeles yeah. at Chavez ravine um, so we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, basketball has started up the NBA Thank has God. Been their season. Uh, we'll talk about the WNBA. Congratulations to the Chicago Sky mm -hmm. on their first ever WNBA championship. Um, so there's been a lot of stuff since I since I was on vacation last week. And, and I had a hiccup yesterday on one of my on one of my sites. Uh oh, what happened, Lewis? Go ahead. Well, for some reason, there is an occasional hiccup that my Facebook pages get. Um, okay. it has happened before, and the thing is, when that happens, you gotta wait 24 hours for it to come back. Wow, okay, I don't, why, I don't know why it does it, but for some reason, every few months, the page goes out of order, and, and the notes get out of order too. Because I did it in advance, you know, I do my notes in advance, and it comes right. up, you know, in order. It went out of order, I'm like, okay, it's gonna happen again. I know it's gonna happen again, it's gonna happen like you know, about Tuesday, like, okay, so when this happens, I gotta wait 24 hours for it to come back. So I had to go to a substitute site, which uh, is pretty uh, screwy. But uh, I can say screwy in this show, right? You can, yes. Okay. Can. okay. So it was screwy. I'm like, well, I guess I got to wait till about 9 o'clock tonight for it to start up again. And when I went back, yeah, it was fixed. So Good. it does happen, but it's only temporary. It's not permanently destroyed. Good. And, guys, we can also be uh, – this show will also be on its entirety on our YouTube channel – uh, the sports are Bradley Walker slide over there. Uh, all of our previous shows are on there. I think this is the first time in two weeks, Lewis, we're not having a guest on. I don't have any guests on. Um, oh, I, I have one in the workings. Um, next week, I'm going to see a uh, golf exercise specialist here in the Tampa Bay area. Oh. And here's what he told me. To have him on here, I have to experience what he does. So next Tuesday and Thursday, I am going to do an assessment. He's going to show me some exercises and all that stuff. So I will let you guys. He'll be on here probably the following Thursday, uh, probably the first So he's week a trainer. Thursday. He's a trainer. That's correct. Yeah. So I'm going to go. Well, I guess I'm going to be able to be on here because I don't know if you know this, but Facebook is making changes. They're changing okay. the name and everything. So it looks like I might be screwed permanently. Oh, that's not good. Okay. No. I have been uh, speaking of that. I haven't heard from Adam all day. I don't know if he's going to be on here tonight or not. Um, he I'm usually sure. will let me know if he's not going to make it. So I don't know if any. I hope he's yeah, okay. Yeah. I hope he's all right. Um, 
But if you want, um, we can talk about the WNBA. Why not? Because that's kind of All right. uh, more uh, here. I, like I said, the Chicago Sky uh, won their first WNBA championship. So congratulations to that franchise. They uh, rally from a 14-point deficit to beat the Mercury. Um, mm-hmm. What game was that, Lewis? Was that game five? What game? It was game four. Game four. Okay. Four. It's a best of five series, but they were in the fourth game. Okay. So, all right. So they ended up beating the Phoenix Mercury. Yeah. 80 to 74. Uh, the Kalia Cooper took home the finals MVP honors after averaging 17 points and five and a half rebounds per game against Phoenix. Wow, that's good. Uh, Phoenix is my favorite player. Who's your favorite? Oh, who, oh, uh, Diana Tarazi. Bingo. Oh, like you didn't know that, did you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I think we would discuss that. I think we discussed that before I went on vacation yeah, about yeah. who the top uh, NBA uh, players were. Um, but that's cool. Okay. All right. So well, here's the question I have: um, Where does this rank, Lewis? I mean, you, you're more of a basketball guy than mm-hmm. I am. Where would you rank this as far as like? Importance in the WNBA for a team to win their first title. Oh, um, it's, well, it's monumental. You got your first title finally. I mean, you've been around since uh, 2006, whatever. It's, you know, yeah. that's 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 a long time even for a franchise. You know, it's been around 15 years and never got a title. And you know, it shows now you've um, shown your way up uh, to uh, being competitive. It took you a long time, but you know what? Sometimes it takes a long time for you to get to that level. And you know, be considered you know one of the um, one of the top teams in the league. I can't say elite because you had to be more like you know like uh, more than one time to become elite. But you're you know you're on you're on your way. You've 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 taken that first step, you know, to becoming you know a, a considerable uh, team in the in the WNBA. So congratulations on that. And it, it wasn't an easy season for them either because the best they did was a 500 regular season, 16 and 16, and they still won it anyway. That's kind of almost hey, in a way. Like it's 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 second like regular season, but we don't really care. We only care about the we only care about the playoffs anyway. So why don't we suck in the regular season? Big deal. Well, I, I I think Lewis, it goes on the lines too of that's a Cinderella story because you're, you're not going to tell me that anybody came in after they got into the finals and said, "Hey, a, a, a 500 team is going to win the WNBA title." Everybody would be laughing at us if you right, said, "Of course." Well, especially like, it was like. <laughs> They're gonna yeah. like what? <laughs> yeah, right. Sure. Because wh- where did where did where, what was Phoenix's record this year? Um, what was Phoenix's record? Uh, it was, it was I know it's considerably higher. It's a thirty-two game season. I okay. I better check. I better check on that. Okay. But they do play thirty-two games a year. Uh, last year was cut to twenty-two. I, yeah, twenty-two games. On kind of you know what? So okay. uh, you know, but this was the normal regular season. They only play thirty-two games. They start. Right around uh, Memorial Day weekend, and the regular season uh, ends just after um, like the uh, third week of September. Okay. Okay. Now they don't. Now, of course, their schedule, of course, is a little bit inconsistent. Like the like the NBA, the NHL, um, the Mexican Cockfighting Association, whatever you got in the. Oh Here we go. But you know, it's more like an MLS schedule. They play like every uh, well, you know, they play every seven days, like every seven to ten to twelve days, something like that. You know, that kind of a schedule. Well, the word the word is inconsistent, folks. Well, here's the question I have: How in the world can you develop any team chemistry if you play once a week? That's that what about the NFL? They only play once a week. Well, that's true. I mean, but there are. I mean. If you look at it, though, there are some teams that play Sunday that have to play Thursday. So yeah, but it's not all the time, though. Not true, true. But I'm just saying, and nothing against the WNBA, but football is a lot more physical. I'm sorry, I'm going to say that. No, no, you're right. You're right about that. But you know, chemistry. You know, because it's only once a week. But like I said, it's every seven to ten days for the WNBA. That's what's because they have to like you know break it up. Adam's here. There I'm he here. Help. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I mean, I mean, that's just interesting, Lewis, that they play once every seven days or once every ten days. That's, but then again, then you know what? You're going to get the fresh, the freshest players because yeah, they're, not, yeah. they're not trained to have to play once every two or three nights like they do in the NBA. So yeah, absolutely. 
I, I would agree with that. Games, you know, that's that's more physical exhaustion. Yeah. No yeah. one they say about work management. <laughs> load, yeah, load management. No, I don't know. Although I can't say that, you know, full load management because look at baseball. They don't consider that full load management. They play 100, 190,000 games a year. So uh, that's not workload management. They play six, seven days a week. So, yeah. uh, you know, who's got the real work management? Thank you very much. Look at I mean, during the playoffs, they're playing, you know, three days in a row. Yeah. yeah they don't yeah. get a day off. And, you know, so, and, you and the World Series starts uh, 36 hours after uh, – I mean, the uh, spring training starts 36 hours after the World Series ends. So uh, Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Well, we got to get this game over with because we got to report to spring training uh, tomorrow at noon. So uh, we got to hear this game up, guys. Very short winter. Yeah. No, because the seat the, the off season gets shorter for baseball every day and year. I mean, if you think seems about like it, they're they're right now. We're in the middle. We're at the end of October. Yes. So let's say both somehow the Red Sox win tomorrow, or yeah, win tomorrow. They force a game seven. Yuck! Right, and then oh. somehow the Atlanta series goes the full seven. So you're talking what next week, middle of next week before Tuesday they get starts seven. Tuesday. Tuesday, all right, mm -hmm. and say the World Series goes a complete seven games. Yes. So you're talking and we can extra innings. We can go right into Thanksgiving. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You're talking. You're talking the middle of November before baseball gets over, and then bam, come April, bam, they're right back to it again. They're right yeah. back to spring training again. I heard so the one in start... August, February, into February. Yeah, yeah I heard the one start playing in January. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying, there you go, exactly. And then so, pitchers and catchers report at the end of February. I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right, the one chase that start in January. <laughs> <laughs> and that's if you don't play any winter ball. Yeah. No, they're gonna screw winter ball. They're gonna go right, they're gonna go right from, you know, it's completely nonstop. We're gonna play 250 games a year. Uh we're gonna cut the spring training down to a week. And uh, you know, we're gonna go right in like about say uh Thanksgiving or into the first week of December. You know, like yeah, it's, right. It's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot more generate, uh, generate money for us <laughs> if and only if they come to a new CBA. So let's just put it if that way. Right. If yeah, that's the biggest if in the. <laughs> that would be the. Uh, I if. <laughs> if they. Begin. That would be the elephant in the room, wouldn't it? It's a money yeah. that else. Wait. All right, yeah. let me see if I can do this. So we'll flip to the NBA since we're on the basketball topic. Oh, um, last night in New York, in New York game. Next, the next one in double overtime. I saw that over the yeah. Celtics. Yeah, I saw that. Ah, yeah. um, how big of an impact is it that Kyrie Irving is not playing this year or is out or whatever, however long? You know, I think it's going to help the Nets better because it's going to be less of a distraction with him off the court because okay. with him it was – with his griping and whatnot, like, oh, I'm not gonna get the vaccine. Like, well, I don't really care. You should though. But he's gonna right. drag all the he would drag all the drama in, you know, the team's gonna be upset, fans gonna be upset, I'm gonna be upset, and so forth. So I think sometimes it's best that if you don't have a uh, quote unquote troublemaker or what do you wanna call it on the court, because it's only gonna create more drama and it's gonna cause a problem for the team. And you won't see a 50 game win season this year. Probably if I look about a 10 game winning season this year, we would suck. Yeah. So it's best to get rid of the garbage and just concentrate the game with the players who are playing instead of the troublemakers. Like, well, if I can help some from Drake, maybe that can help me out and render my decision of going back in. Like, you know, you get you get the point. Though. But, you know, he's been a problem, and he's only continuing. Yeah. He's, laying, he's laying himself down. He's laying the fans down too. And of course, speaking of troublemakers, you got uh, you know uh, Simmons. For yeah, there's another guy. There's another one too. Uh, yep. he's, right. a, he's a whack. He's a whack job. Well, here's the thing. Let's say let's say that somehow he does come back to play for Philadelphia. I know it's a why one. he doesn't want to play. So he comes back, and the first night he he's there at the Oops. Wells Fargo Center there in Philadelphia, wherever the Sixers play, and you know they they introduce Joel Embiid, and then. He, they introduce him second. They're they're gonna boo him. The, oh, of course. He, 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 are you kidding me? They're gonna boo him. They're gonna, boo, gonna pee on him. Not boo. Him. And, I mean, guys, just real quick. If you guys don't know out there, the WN or excuse me, the NBA is celebrating their 75th anniversary. This is wow. the 75th season of NBA basketball. Right. I think they're going through the top 75 players in history. I think is yes. what I heard. Um, I have I haven't looked at the list. I have no idea, but this is the 75th anniversary. 
of NBA basketball. Do they have a list now? Yeah, I, they, I saw one earlier. Uh, okay. I'll bring up a much more yeah. then. The, all your usual suspects were there. What'd you do? <laughs> all the usual suspects. I mean, you said, <laughs> you said you're suspects. I mean, what did you do? <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. Well, again, it's, it's it's early in the season. I, I saw that the Warriors yeah. uh, did a good job to LeBron and company in Los Angeles the other night, too. Yeah. So it is early. Obviously, the season just started. Right. Uh, yeah, but um, Westbrook, you know, wasn't too happy about, you know, the outcome. And he was taking it pretty hard himself. But, you know, LeBron's like, hey, hey, look, don't worry about it. Look, you have one game. It's, you know, your first day here was, look. The first game of the season is not going to make or break a team. No, it really can't. You know, yeah, no. Every time, like, oh well, we lost the first game. Oh, this is going to be a horrible season. We're going, we're going to be, we're going to be terrible. Oh, you know, say the Lakers. Oh, they lost the first game. There's no way they're going to compete this year, people. The first game is trying to get, is trying to get adjusted. It is not going to kill you if you lose. If you lost thirty games during the season, then you, yeah, that's probably going to kill you, pretty much. But the first game, no, don't worry, no, don't worry about it. Don't blame yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. I happen to agree with LeBron this one for once. You know, yeah. Brush it off. Brush it off. You got. You're gonna lose the game or two, so no reasoning. I mean, I mean, you're you. They have an 82 game season. I don't think one's gonna matter. I now, I know, I know, Russell, Russell. You know, he's an emotional player. I watched yeah about him on HBO. He's an emotional guy, so obviously um, he takes things a lot more serious than a lot of players do. And mm. I'm not saying it's bad that they don't take it serious. If you're an NBA player, you're getting paid right millions of dollars to play a game that you love. I, I hope you love it. I mean, I don't. But know. Right. at the same time, uh, I think, you know, at the same time, you can't let your emotions get the best of you either. True. Very yeah, true. Very true. I was gonna say, you know, there's a fine line between being emotional, you know, and caring, and being a sore loser. Yes. Not being able to handle losing. Lose. Yeah. You know, I think that, that that separates the greats from the good from the greats is the ability to handle losing. Because if you can't handle losing, you're going to do a lot more losing than you are winning through yes. the course of your career. Yep. And right. it's how you handle losing that defines you as a player. Correct. And we'll see here in a couple of weeks. Like, with Lou, like you guys were alluding to, this is game one. Game one won't make or break your season if you don't let. Um, right. One loss doesn't 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 matter. But um, if you get you know if you're too hard on yourself, and I think Westbrook can be one of those guys that's just too damn hard on himself. Yeah. And, and he, he thinks that every shot needs to go in, and and uh-huh. he's he's been defensively inconsistent throughout his career, but definitely definitely believes that every shot should go in and feels like a failure if he misses a shot. And I think that's really – can he work with LeBron? How is that dynamic? How is that relationship going to evolve over the next 81 games? Mm-hmm. Yes. Ooh, he gave that ball a rock. That ball is crushed. If you uh, – they're pre- here's the score. They're predicting the NBA champion and the major award winners. I know we're in game one. So, for the Eastern Conference, the Eastern champ they have is there is uh, six right. Or there is a total of eight writers. Um, you have one, two, three, four, five, six of them that have the Nets as the champ, and okay. one of them is Milwaukee. And the other one has the Heat, and then the finalists you have the Bucks uh, in all but two. One Nets and one Heat on the on the final. So it looks like that's who they're predicting. The Western Conference mm-hmm. is mostly the Jazz and the Nuggets. A couple Lakers sprinkled in there. Uh, and some Sun and the Suns as well. Looks like they have the Suns in there. So I, it's either. I, Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I expect the Warriors to, to be to bounce back. I do so. If, if, if everybody stays healthy in, in, in Oakland, or San Francisco, or wherever they're now. Um, right. They'll bounce back. As Steph and Clay can stay healthy, they'll be fine. Yeah, and they stay. It said, but in the article, that they predict 
that Golden State was mentioned if Clay Tom- when Clay Thompson comes back off injury. So they oh, did. Is he not back? I thought he was back for game one. Was he back? For game he wasn't. Uh, I don't. Did, did he play? Did he play against the Lakers? I don't know. I didn't. I thought. He, I thought he was. I thought he was back, but I. I. I, I just assumed he. I don't know if he's. I mean, it's 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 now this article. Hang on a minute, but let me see something real quick because the article was written was written three days ago. So maybe uh, possibly he's back. I don't really know. Um, it looks like the the champion. No, it's a, they're predicting uh, again out of those eight writers, six of them have the Brooklyn Nets as the champs. One has the Bucks repeating, and one has the Jazz. Oh, my one. Yeah, only one. Um, and then it goes, <laughs> these are the 15 seeds. I don't know what that means. Um, but they have the Orlando Magic, seven out of eight. The only other one is the Pistons. And then yeah. the Western Conference, there are um, five of them that have the Rockets. The other three have the Thunder. Hmm. That's the 15 seed in the West. Rookie of the year, it looks like it's either going to be Jalen Green of the Rockets, Cade Cunningham of the Pistons, or oh, then yeah. Uh, one person has Jalen Suggs from the Magic. Oh yeah. Um, I think that would be the the, the fifteen would be the race to the bottom. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Coach of the year. Um, they have two of them have Quinn Snyder of the Jazz. Um, two of them have Michael Malone of the Nuggets. Oh. Okay. Uh, two of them have Tyler Jenkins of the Grizzlies. Mm. Uh, one to vote for Chris Finch of the Timberwolves and one for Eric Spostra of the Miami Heat. So that's oh, what I have predicted. Um, executive, executive I don't the, follow what? basketball. I don't follow basketball yeah. enough to be able to comment on coach of the year. Um, executive of the year. Uh, they have two for Pat Riley, two for Sean Marks of the Nets, one oh. for – Arturius Cadavalas, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, of Chicago. Uh, the Bulls, Tommy Shepard of the Wizards is one, and they have Rob Palinka of the Lakers as another uh-huh. pick. Um, uh-huh. Most improved player, uh, they have OG Anobli from Toronto, Terrence Mann of the Clippers, uh, Jared Jackson Jr. of the Grizzlies, Michael mm-hmm. Porter Jr. of the Nuggets. Mm. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr. of the Rockets, OG, okay, that one of the Raptors, Kelvin Johnson of the Spurs, and Jordan Poole of the Warriors. So these are, uh, yeah, that'd be, is that comeback most improved player? Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. I uh, thought Jordan Poole was a rookie. I mean, the, uh, defensive, yeah. defensive player of the year. Uh, they have two of them have, or three of them have Giannis. Okay. Uh, you have two of them that have uh, Anthony Davis, okay. uh, one that has Joel Embiid, and one that has Bam the Bottle uh, Bada Bilo for the Heat. So that is okay. the other one that they have picked. Uh, the sixth man of the year, uh, they have two of them have Tyler Hero of the Heat. Yes. Uh, you have Pat Mills of the Nets, Jordan mm-hmm. Clarkson of the Jazz, Derek Rose of the Knicks. There you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. of the Hawks and the Anthony Melton of the Grizzlies and the MVP goes, they have four, half of them have it going to KD. Uh, the other four have one has Giannis, one has Jok- Jokovic, one has Doncic, and the other one has Stephen Curry as the MVP. Yeah. Steph Curry could, could run, could make a run at MVP again. Look at Luca. Uh, yeah, I, I like Luca too. He's my favorite player in the NBA right now. So that um, is, yep. DraftKings, or, yeah, it's DraftKings. They have Jordan Poole at two thousand to one odds of winning Sixth Man of the Year. I'd be, I that would be all right with me. Yeah, that's a nice bet because you put down a hundred dollars, you're walking out of there with a lot of money. Yeah, hell, you put down a buck. Yeah, two yeah. thousand's coming back to you. Nice. Right, nice. nice. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah right. exactly um real quick but i wanted to we are getting deeper into the playoffs for nascar all right i was hoping, uh-huh. i was wondering if you're gonna bring this up or not where where i mean it says the top five breaking down uh i can't so read the athletic except on my phone i don't know why it won't work on my computer uh, so we're, we're yeah 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 
Okay, so I was gonna say we're we're two races left till the till the championship till championship weekend, uh, yeah. in Cup. I think it's I think it's I think everybody has two more. I actually I take that back. The trucks have one more race before championship weekend, which will be next weekend in Martinsville. Uh, Xfinity and Cup both have two races before the champ championship weekend. Um, they're at Kansas this week. I mean, Larson's already punched the ticket to the championship four, so. I, I, he's got to be odds on favorite to, to win it all. He's got seven wins on the year, uh, a dozen or more top fives. I, don't, I think he's DNF once or twice all year. Um, yeah, I, I really, I'm, it's, it's Larson's championship to lose at this point. Um, but Phoenix is a wild card. I like Phoenix as a championship race. It's a fun little track. Um, and, you know, and it's, that's what I think makes the playoffs in any sport. And I think, you know, with it being in a, in a more traditional points, uh, format where you have cumulative points over the whole year, instead of having a playoffs, um, you would have the, it would be a two horse race going for in the last three, it would be Hamlin and Larson. And I like the fact that every year you you know you're gonna get four guys, and that makes it makes Kansas and Martinsville and and in all the races it really makes all the races a playoff race, where it's a, a lot like the a lot like college football where if you happen to get a good you know if you happen to you get on a go on a run make a run late in the season you win a couple of races you can make the championship four, even if you haven't had the best particularly a particularly strong season. Now, I know a lot of people don't like that because it's not fair, you know, because you have all these other races. But, you know, when I look at I look at Tampa Bay in the in the NFL last year and they didn't they didn't have the most stellar season, but they got hot when they needed to. And they won the four games that they had to win to win it all, you know, and, and it's not like they're it's not like they're springing this on everybody in the 11th hour. This is how it's been for the last four years. This is the this is the format, and it's with stage racing and the fact that you can get point, you can accumulate points throughout the race. It, it means it makes hitting the setup, and you know, hope and go next year it'll be even better. And it was it was in 2019 it was really, it was a lot of fun because if you hit the setup in qualifying and you have a good car qualifying, and you have a good car in the race, you you can get points early in the race, which can help you make up ground. Uh, whereas before, if you, even if you had a good car early in the race, you were just riding for how many ever miles to like the last 50 miles, you run hard after a caution, run hard after a car, you know, if there was a caution, but you could go long stretches, you could go hundred, you know, a place like Kansas, for example, which we're going to this weekend, you go two fuel runs without in between cautions, you could go 110 120, 130 laps without a caution, and everybody's just riding because you can't because there's because you can't pass, mm -hmm. you know if if you because of the dirty air, you know, you get up behind somebody and you get stuck behind them and you can't pass, and if your car's not on, you know if you if you miss the setup if you're a tenth off, after four laps you're over a second behind whoever's in front of you and whoever's behind you is catching you. And it gives you a little bit more strategy to work with. Um, did you want to get into the Kevin Harvick, Chase Elliott? Why not? Issues? Go right ahead again. Go right ahead. Because yeah, yeah, we didn't, right get, cause we didn't get into the, we had. I didn't know anything about this, so you go right okay. ahead. Okay. So about we it. didn't because we, we didn't have a show after Bristol, and we didn't have a show after the Roval. Um, and then and then this, last week was kind of quiet. Elliott didn't have the best day, and Harvick's out of the playoffs. Um, so at Bristol, about 30 to go, they were racing for uh, for the win, for the lead, and Elliott had the best car all night, and Harvick was, um, and it was towards the end of a fuel run, and Elliott was slipping back a little bit, and Harvick was coming on a little bit, but um, so they go into uh, I think it was was either, no it was two they go they're going into one, and they got a lap car on the outside, Elliott's in the middle. Harvick's down low, and Harvick pinched Elliott up behind the lap car, 
and Elliot turned down to go around the lap car, and Harvick came up and just run Elliot right up to the wall and cut his uh, mm -hmm. left front tire. And he came he had to come down pit road, ended up falling up, falling two laps down, and came but came back out in front of Harvick and slowed him down a little bit. Slowed him down just enough that Larson was able to catch him, who was Elliot's teammate, um, and was able to catch and pass him. So then, I forget where they went. It was Talladega was the week after Bristol, and nothing happened at the Talladega ended up being rain shortened by Wallace got his first win um, at Talladega, ironically enough, after the fiasco that Talladega was last year for right, right. Bubba Wallace. Um, and so then in so then two weeks ago at the Roval, they were uh, Elliot and Harvick were fighting for one of the last transfer spots in the round of eight. And um, about fifty to go, Harvick was running behind Elliot and you can you can watch the video, Harvick stands in the gas and just absolutely runs Elliot over. Just completely dumps flat out dumps him for payback for what happened at Bristol. And um they come off the they they come off the inner loop. They go back up on the banking, and Elliot turns down trying to take out Harvick. Ends up taking himself in and uh, um, um, yeah. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, Brisk, not Briscoe, the other one, Cole Custer. They end up getting together, and Elliot comes to pit road. They check out his car, and um, and uh, they like, there wasn't any suspension damage, so they just. Doc taped everything back down and sent him back out. And there was a, like, if they get to him, they're going to, you know, you try to ruin our day, we'll, we'll pay you back. Well, 15 to go, 12 to go. I don't, I don't remember exactly how many to go. Elliot finally caught the four. They got a caution, got everything, got caught back up. A little bit of controversy because they, when well, Elliot's bumper cover fell off and uh, they didn't black flag him, which I thought they were going to, but they didn't. And the bumper cover came off. Through a caution, everybody uh, the, the field tightened up, and um, so what? So and they're going into one. This is the first corner there at the Roval. They go into one, and Elliot was half car length behind um, Harvick, and Harvick just missed the corner, locked it up, and absolutely pounded the wall, burst into flames, done for the day. Knocked out of the playoffs, and um, I thought it was hilarious. You try to take a guy out, and I'm taking yourself out. It seems to happen a lot in NASCAR. You have a lot of heated, yeah, heated between mm -hmm. drivers. <laughs> between drivers, yeah. you road a short track race, and I'll do that. Mm -hmm. So Harvick, um, Harvick is out. Is Elliot in, or is Elliot? Yeah, yeah. Elliot moved on. Elliot moved on, and Harvick was knocked out after he, after right. he tried to wipe Elliot out at the Roval. Elliot's team got his car back, patched up enough to be able to keep going, and they end up coming home twelve. And um, Harvick wasn't able to continue after pounding the the, the turn one wall. He <laughs> absolutely destroyed his car. He, he, Elliot, they, they both got hard on the binders. And um, Elliot got off it early enough when he was able to roll the corner. Is uh, Harvick didn't get off it soon enough, and when and he he just ended up going straight out into the into the turn one wall, just destroyed his car. Um, See what revenge gets you guys. Don't do it. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Don't do it. I mean, that's interesting now that, you know, there you have that. Um, last night, but there's a, I don't know if there's a Cheddar's in, in there's a restaurant called Cheddar's here in Fort. I don't know if it's in Tennessee or in New Jersey, but. I don't think so. I have, I got a cup, last, a plastic cup. They're doing, um, it. Well, it's a junior and senior, Dale Earnhardt Jr. dinner. Mm. It's on the cup, and I got the cup. I, it's being washed or i would hang on a second hang on now i'll go get it real quick hang on man. Hey, so was, cheddars, right yeah 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 hang on man. yeah I, i'm a cheddars around here yeah we have something called checkers i didn't think that that's what he meant no uh, checkers checkers yeah. well it's called checkers. Yeah, it's i know it's called rallies in certain areas 
Yeah, uh -huh. rallies, checkers. Here's the I have on my green screen. Nice. Right there. Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, hang on a minute, guys. Let me see if I can get my green screen to. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, see if I can. Oh, okay, cool. Here's yeah, the that's cup. really cool. Uh, I'm Let's trying to get it towards the rest. See the number. Oh, yeah, there. that's cool. Um, I believe this is Richard Childress, who I guess owned both yeah. cars. I think he still does till this day. Uh -huh. He yeah. owned. He owned Senior's car. He never owned the A. Okay. Senior, senior owned the A. DEI was Dale's, Dale's baby. Okay. Yeah. And then when he, so what happened is that in '95 he decided this was in the late '90s. He decided he wanted to start his own team because he never wanted his kids to struggle the way he struggled coming up. And so he's like, "Well, I'm just gonna do it myself." And so he started the he started DEI. And he started with Steve Park, and um, they had limited success. They they were you know an upcoming program. They were new. They were they were struggling. And in 01, this winter uh, winter of 2000, you know, wins that race at Talladega in 2000. You know, 18th to first and and two laps. And um, so they go. It, it was him and Ty Norris and the people from Napa, and they're they're talking. You know, and they're, they're, you know, business meetings, whatnot, and they're talking. And they get the NAP of people to sign on for, I think it was like $10 million. $10 million a year, I think, was, was the, the number they ended up settling on. And they're like, who are you going to get to drive for us? Who are you going to get to drive for us? And it's like, I'm going to get Michael Waltrip to drive for you. I'm like, Michael Waltrip? Like, yeah. Michael's a good driver. I'm going to go get him. So he, he calls Michael, and they've been friends for a while. And he called Michael up, and he's like, you gonna come drive the number fifteen Napa car for me? Like, yeah, of course. And um, so, and then he gets Budweiser to come on and sponsor Dale Jr. And then they put that team together, and they they absolutely dominate dominate Speed Weeks, so, you know. And um, they they go out and they're uh, it's you know five to go. It's DEI one two and Senior three. And you all know the story. What happens next? And when, when, when he passes away, there's it's a ship in the storm. It without a captain, and the team is absolutely directionless without without senior. And, and Teresa had no no interest in, in in owning or running the team anymore. And it all goes to shit. And by by 2007, as I was judging his podcast. He was, they weren't, um, they weren't in good financial shape. He, ch checks were bouncing, people weren't getting paid, and I'm doing. Uh, yeah, and and so that's when Junior decided to walk away. When Junior walked, when, Ju when Junior went went over to Hendrick, that was it. Yeah, guess what? He was he was teammates with uh, Jeff Gordon and. Um, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Case Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, Kate, yeah, yeah. That was, and then he never, he never found the success his father had. He was no. a good driver, but but not great. Twenty six wins, no championships. Um, I think fifth or fourth or fifth was his best points finish. I mean, you know, he was never one of my favorites because I was a Jimmy Johnson fan. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and and by the time I came along, senior was at the end, the tail end of his career, and um, it was obvious that he was ah best finish was third, third and uh, best the best points finish for junior was third, um, in 03, you know, and that was that was the end the the real end of DEI was the fact that. They couldn't run good anywhere but the plate tracks. Outside of Daytona and Talladega, their their short um, short track program, their intermediate program, they never were they were never able to find the um, the speed that the other teams had, and the the budgets that the other teams had were so were so massive that and and without the leadership of of Dale Senior. That 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 I, the ideas 
and the and the direction that, that he had, the vision he had, he didn't have a second in command. You know, he didn't have somebody that had the same vision as him. And and Teresa just, you know, when senior dies, you know, being at the racetrack was just miserable. And she was just miserable. And that really led to the downfall of DEI. Yeah, I, I, I heard I heard I heard stories about that that when senior passed away, um, I know I know I know it made I know it was on a lot of sports websites and newspapers because again in Wapio read newspapers back in those days right. uh, and stuff like that. I do remember reading about uh, the fall of DEI after senior passed away. And like you just said, it's it's like a boat with no captain. And when your captain goes and his vision for the team is he's not there anymore. So the mm-hmm. vision is not the same. And then when you have somebody who doesn't want to own a team or own cars, well, then the team is really up shit's creek without a paddle because yeah, you don't, I mean, that happens a lot. I mean, it's surprisingly, and I understand people don't want to do certain things and, but I mean, you, I mean, say, you know, say you were, uh, you know, a son or daughter of an owner, you don't want to take over that team. I mean, I would be, why line up to do that? But then again, I'm right. a sports guy. not everybody's a sports fan. Not everybody's right. there. Right. It's a football fan. And, and then, football team. so yeah, it, it just depends. Right. And, and, and then you, and then it, but it's also the, the whole, the business of being an owner. That's true. Also, Correct. you know, you know, you get so used to being famous for who your family, your family is, and you don't have any other responsibility. You, you get to, you know, go out and do whatever you want. You know, you, you can ride on mommy and daddy's money. Right. And you get to do whatever you want, whenever you want, or, you know, even, or, or a spouse, you know. You're so used to just the everyday grind of just being the spouse. And then when all of that falls in your lap and it's managing the people, managing the money, managing your time. And you have to deal with the fact that you, you're... Now you're the one making all the calls. You're the one that's making all the decisions, mm-hmm. and your heart just isn't in it. You know, it, it can be very, you know, especially to lose your to lose someone like that in that way. Mm-hmm. You know, when you when you plan for five years, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, and then that, you know, it 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 becomes daunting, especially when you're when everybody expects you to figure it out and have it all figured out, you know, show up on in the office on Monday after a bad week at the racetrack and you got three junk cars or two junk cars mm-hmm. and, 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 uh, you know, one, you got one guy who's, who's decent and two junk race cars and the Napa people are calling and the Pennzoil people are calling and like, where's our results? We're not making any money. We're, we're, we're spending more money on buying you guys new race cars every week, or we're spending more money on, on repairing race cars than we are getting ready for next week. And you just get overwhelmed because you just don't, you don't, and you stop taking calls and you become a recluse and you shut yourself in your office and you won't talk to your drivers and you won't talk to the team. And you're constantly firing people and hiring people and, and shuffling and trying to, trying to make it work. And it's just not working. And so you shut down. Because everybody was expecting senior, you know, he he's gonna run a couple more years, and he's gonna go off into the sunset because he was he's fixing to be fifty, and you know his best years were behind him, and you know he was just riding out, finish out his contract with RCR, and then move into ownership and be a full time, you know, owner because Dale Senior only knew one thing, and that was NASCAR racing, and 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 motorsports, you know, he lived his life for motorsports. And, you know, nobody had a plan for, well, what if Dale's not here? You know, what, what if, what if something happens to Dale and he, you know, he's not here? Nobody had a plan. Nobody had a plan for, for Dale being gone. Nobody had a plan for the next step without, without senior, because, you know, they, you know, and, and, uh, you know, he was a warrior, he was a gladiator. He wasn't going to get, he wasn't going to get killed, you know? He, he can't die. 
And so nobody ever thought, you know, because you can't think like that. If you start thinking about it, and you so you let that creep into the back of your head, you, and you, you're you don't take the chance. You don't go three wide. You don't you don't get out on the apron. You don't try. If you're more worried about getting hurt, that's when you get hurt. And you know, and then and what happens when God dies? Where do you go from there? How do you move on? You know, God is dead. What now? Hmm. And 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 so it was the the demise of DEI was inevitable, and with it the de the demise of of NASCAR. Um, I don't think, and I, we talked about this before. Is so many. I think that's what makes the NFL so popular. Mm -hmm. Is they don't have one superstar. No. They don't have a. They don't have a Michael Jordan. They don't have a Wayne Gretzky. They don't have a Dale Earnhardt. They right. don't have a Mark McGuire. They have. A dozen of those guys, you know, right? You know, they, they whether it was, you know, whether it was in the in the seventies, it was Namath and and um, Bradshaw, right. and United United in the sixties, um, in the eighties, you had Montana and Young and Elway, Elway, and in the nineties, you had Aikman and. Marino. Um, Marino and um, Favre and uh, Michael Irvin. You know, you can. You, yeah. you know, there wasn't just there wasn't one guy. And then and then you look at you look at the, you look at NASCAR. It was Dale Senior and everybody else. You look at the NBA. Well, wait, what, about what? What about Richard? What about Richard Petty? Yeah, Petty was in the seventies and the sixties and seventies. But but at the he's end, really you, know, I'm, I'm, really you know, unless you're a fan of the sport as a casual, as uh, a casual sports fan, right? You know who you know outside of Gretzky, who who are the you know maybe Lemieux, people might bring up Lemieux, but but if as a casual sports fan who really you know I just I watch the games because I like the games, but Mark I'm not really, I'm not dedicated to it, you know, right. and, and basketball had that same kind of. If you're not dedicated to it, you don't care. In the '90s, you know, like if you're not as a casual fan, you know, in the '90s, you know, you know, Jordan. In the '80s, it was um, maybe Bird or Magic. Magic. You know, and and so so what the NFL has done is it's 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 gotten stars all you know it it has stars everywhere. That's right. You don't see it in the other leagues. The NFL, you know, has has one star after the other, and they just don't. Yep. Well, wait, and they so invest in those stars. The whole league. I, I really don't believe that. Well, and that's the problem is, is that the, you know, mm -hmm. the NHL, the NBA, the NASCAR, MLB, they got complacent, you know, yeah, have. With, with having one superstar, one guy who was the guy. Yes. And. And that's what the NFL has never is never been a it's never been a one star league. No. Whereas in the USFL they had no they only one star. <laughs> <laughs> and in the uh, world league they had nobody. No oh, boy. Right. Well okay. and, and that's the thing yeah. about this. you have to have multiple stars across Yes. All your all your you know, both leagues, both conferences. You know, you generate star power so that if Gretzky isn't playing, people are still invested, and that's what the NFL does so well is market it. Well, stars. Was that, a, that a great team back in the eighties. You know, they had Yari Curry, they had Mark Messier, they had yeah. Gretzky, Kelly Rudy. I mean, really, I mean, that was you know, I mean, I know I'm not Canadian, but you know, I, I did follow the Oilers, and that team was unstoppable. Right. Yeah. But the biggest team beforehand, the uh, Islanders, and they were, you know, the team of the early eighties, right? Maybe six, but, or eight, right? But still, but they got so complacent, and that's my point. And my point about you know the difference between why the NFL is so popular versus the other leagues. Yes, is that the other leagues got got so complacent that they didn't develop any other stars. 
and they made they tried to manufacture stars like Crosby and Ovechkin, and mm-hmm. and and putting Pittsburgh and Washington on every other weekend. Or, or Boston, you know, MLB is Boston, New York, Boston, New York, Boston, New York. Turn around, it's Boston, New York. I think Boston, New York are probably playing later on this evening. And um, That's tomorrow. You know, ah, right, right. And, and, you know, and in the NBA, hmm. after, after Jordan leaves, you know, if you weren't a basketball fan, if you were, you know, somebody who's, oh, yeah, I, oh, if a basketball game's on, it's all right, but I'm not seeking it out. You know, until until the emergence of, of, you know, I stopped watching. I really didn't care about basketball after the Pistons got bad, after their 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 run their little run there in the early two thousands. There wasn't anyone in the NBA that really made me want to watch until Steph Curry got there. What about Kobe? Um, didn't really want. Yeah, you know, I wasn't a big Kobe fan. Okay. Wasn't a, you know, and that's the problem is that the other leagues didn't develop like the like the NFL. And it's constantly developing new stars and new people to watch, and and, yeah. and not just not just at you know at, at all positions. If you like, if you like football. If you like defense, you got Miles Garrett, Joey Bosa. Um, you know, uh, no. oh, jo- Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Uh, just off the top of my head, if you like if you like offensive football. You got you you've got all the quarterbacks that we've already mentioned. You've got Nick Chubb or um, yeah, um, oh Christian McCaffrey, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. You know, you think about the fact that the NFL puts, you know, emphasizes more than just one star, right? On right. In, in any one, and it and it, it 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 showcases all of its talent across all of its teams, right? And it does a great job of marketing. And putting more than just two or three teams on on prime time every year. Yes. People complain about people complain about the Jag. What was who was the Jags and um, who played in London last week? The Jags and the Dolphins. Dolphins. Yeah. But you know when was the last time Colorado and um, Cincinnati were ever on national TV for an MLB game? Uh, never. Yeah, exactly. You you might say that. Well, that's you know why are they putting such bad matchups on on national television? It's to no. expose expose those teams and 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 build those and so that you're not constantly watching New England and Dallas or Green Bay and Chicago. You know, it's not the same five or six teams every week. In those national televised primetime games. Yeah, but those are the teams you want to watch. They want to watch, you know, teams that are not, you know, not and that's what they just suck, you know, because one of the team wants, like, you know, if you're like in the uh, middle of the season, if your team's like, if you're playing a matchup like the, a 2 and 7 team against a 4 and 6 team, nobody's going to care. And that's the thing about the NFL is the NFL doesn't care. Is the NFL knows that they have to expose you to those teams, because if you're not pay, if you're the casual fan, it, it, you know you have to capture every fan. You have to you have to showcase every team every week. You know, and you have to you can't just show the best. You don't because you don't know who's going to be good every year. You don't no. know that game last weekend, the game in London, the the Jags and uh, Dolphins was a pretty good football game. It was, and and so you know the NFL. If you don't put those games on TV, if you don't, if you're not showcasing those teams, then people won't. If you're constantly showing, you know, if it was Kansas City and you know Kansas City and a New York team. Because Patrick Mahomes is one of the best players, and then whoever Tom Brady was playing every week or every other week, people would would stop tuning in because they would stop caring. Yeah. And I think that's what I think that's the problem is that the that's what makes NFL football so um, is the fact that they have stars across their league. That they can showcase on a week-to-week basis, they and they've developed those stars. People care about those stars, 
no matter whether the team's good or bad, people still care about who are their 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 the 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 players on even the worst team because they've developed those that relationship with their fans. Yes. Speaking of the NFL, you want to get into the John Gruden? Uh... Uh, do we have to? <laughs> Come on, we're gonna get rid of him anyway. Yeah, I find it. What I find interesting is the fact that Gruden was the only one with dirty emails. Yeah. I, I, that I think. Okay, but I'm, I'm gonna stop you real quick there. My boss actually brought that up to me today. Why is it that the NFL only released his emails? Because you know. Well, He's not the only one. Bruce Allen's got him. He's not the only one. Right. So I think what it is is the NFL is going to leak it person by person. You're going to have what I, people come from out. What I, from what I had heard is that Gruden was the only one with – that enough. everyone else was clear. That's what I had heard. Uh-huh. I don't know. I, I think that – You know, I mean, it it all stems around that lovely owner that they have in Washington. So let's yeah, with that, yeah, and Daniel Snyder. That, that's around. kind of the that's the politics and 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 the non sports stuff that I really don't care to get into. That that yeah. for me is where I I draw the line. You know, that's too much. That's too much of the the, the politics that that I don't that when I tune into NFL or when I tune into sports mm-hmm. sports talk radio. Or sports radio in general, not just or uh, sports programming. That it's that's just too much. It, it's just too much politics. Yes, it, it, that's the stuff that that I don't. It doesn't go. It doesn't go well. I don't care for it. I don't care to talk about it. You know, if the league felt that that was, you know, that he's a he's a grown ass man. He's gonna have to deal with the consequences of his actions, and that's. That's all I have to say on the matter because um, it, it's all that po- politically adjacent bullshit that I don't care about. Right. Well, here's the um, thing that I have real quick. Okay, go ahead. These are emails from 2011. Mm-hmm. Why 10 years later do you bring it up to par now? Should have been brought that. back in 2012 or 2013. Why or, are or it to the, yeah. 10 years later? Yeah. To bring yeah. All that, up. that tells me that somebody wanted John Gruden out in Las Vegas. Yeah. Yep. And they're like, okay, let's go dig and find some dirt on him. Guess yeah. what? We found it. Now we can make him resign. We don't want him in Las Vegas. I don't know if the owner uh, doesn't want him there anymore. Uh, that's Al Davis's son, right? I think Al Davis. Yeah. Son. yeah, it's Mark Davis. Um, so I'm wondering if they're maybe they weren't seeing eye to eye. Maybe it has something to do with the G- general manager. And right. not seeing eye to eye. I don't. I mean, I don't know. John. Yeah, Cooper, I don't know either. Go maniac anyway. Yeah. Uh, yes. Here's the funny thing. I'm going to the USF game in two days on Saturday. They okay. took his name out of the Ring of Honor for the Bucks. Right. So I'm yeah. gonna go see what I'm gonna go see what it looks like now that his name is not up there anymore. Right. Was that the Hall of Fame? Was the Hall of Shame? I, right. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't. I, I don't really know. Um, but if you guys want to, we can go back since we're on the NFL. Do you guys yeah. want to go back through last week's games and kind of comment? Yeah, yeah, recap. Yeah. We can go ahead yeah, and yeah. Go this week's games with the lines yeah. like we normally do. Sounds uh, good to me. Looks like the Braves are up two to nothing. In the yeah, game. Freeman hit an absolute uh, monster shot. Two to one. Two to one in the bottom oh. of the second. Who hit it, Freddie Freeman? Yeah. Freddie absolute Freeman. monster Freeman. shot. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I got a lot of friends here in the uh, that are huge Braves fans, so they're going crazy. I would uh, I would love to see Atlanta move on to the World Series. In all honesty, I want it in I want I want an Atlanta uh, Boston World Series. Yeah, uh, the, the Red Sox got to come up with some magic tomorrow night. Do I, hope I know. Right? Is it is that a three two season? Is it, that's three two now, isn't it, Houston? Three two, yeah, Houston. If Houston, yeah. Wins. I fell I fell asleep the other night watching um watching the I think it was game four is Boston and it was two two going into the ninth I fell asleep and then the, and the wheelbarrow fell right off huh? yeah yep I uh, yeah I woke up I woke up like twenty minutes later before I headed back to sleep 
I know what the score was, and it was uh nine to two. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm going back to bed. Good night, everyone. Good to two to two to nine to. How, how does that happen? The uh, top of the Astros order hit well. Altuve, Bregman, and um, Correa all hit I, home runs or all got on base and started the whole, you know, the domino effect. One guy gets yeah, on, the rally. and then the rally starts. Get him, so, yeah. get him on, get him over, get him in. Yep. Um, yeah. last, week, get the last week, guys, we had the Bucks and Eagles. Um, I watched the game while I was on vacation because, you know, the Bucks are on. Uh, they won 28-22. Uh, Brady. Yeah, that was disappointing. Um, the oh, London game. The one, I mean, go ahead. Why was it disappointing? Because the Bucks are my fantasy defense, and they gave up 22 points. <laughs> there you um, go. Fair enough. Had, fair enough. I had they had they had me 10 points, and um, and, and going into the fourth quarter, I was like, okay, cool. And then they gave up. 12 and they got me three points last week, but I did end up winning, so it was all right, though. All right, so you know, you got at least you got something out of it. Yeah, I did. I ended up, I ended up winning, so it wasn't too bad. But then Baker Mayfield has to go and get himself hurt, and then and then yeah. Nick Chubb has to, yeah, yeah, or Kareem Hunt has to go well, get himself hurt. And so both yeah. my backup quarterback and one of my starting running backs is out this week. Well, and I, actually, right now they're up 10 nothing over the uh Broncos, mm-hmm. the case, you know. With Case Keenum, yeah, as Keenum. yeah, I've been watching the hockey, um, so I'm kind of flipping around. So the Jacksonville Jaguars end their 20 game losing streak with a 53 yard field goal. What a game that was! It was such a, that was a fun game to watch. It was a fun game to watch. It was, it was fun to get up at nine o'clock and watch a football game. <laughs> Wake up! Uh oh! Uh oh! I, I heard uh oh. Dodgers just took the lead three two. Oh no! I'll see it. Okay, all right. Um, the next game oh, was fellas. Um, the Packers beat the Bears twenty four fourteen. Of course, Aaron Rodgers doing mm-hmm. I own Chicago after being flipped off by the Chicago Bears fans. Sure he Bears. Yeah, he he, 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 he does. Does a sh- the, he does the discount double check uh, celebration hey. when he Rodgers right? Yeah. Rogers rate. Anybody can get the Rogers rate. Yeah, Rogers. Yeah, anybody can get- <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. right? Yeah. Um, the next game, the Bengals beat the Lions 34-11. Um, Joe Burrow for three touchdowns in a row. Um, yeah. I guess did I see that the Lions head coach cried after last week's loss? A couple weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. a couple weeks ago now. Yeah. Um, and then they came out and laid an absolute egg. <laughs> the uh, Indianapolis Colts beat the Texans thirty-one to three. Yeah, um, the Deshaun Watson trade rumors are now heating up to him go to Miami. Uh, that yeah, to be the 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 uh, upcoming thing. Uh, the Rams yeah. beat the Giants thirty-eight to eleven. Um, the Chiefs beat the Washington Football Team thirty-one thirteen. Uh, the Vikings beat the Panthers 34-28. I think Carolina's lost like three games in a row or at least two uh, out of three. Three or four, yeah. Um, the Ravens I, I, crushed Los Angeles. I was surprised. The Chargers, Chargers yeah. The Chargers, yeah. That was I was definitely – that was not so, – I didn't see that one coming. Uh, I thought I thought the Chargers were going to be a threat. Now, it's only one game. Yeah, what we're talking about. It's only one game. Still early, fairly early in the season. Uh, we're we're just past the quarter mark, so we're actually about halfway now. Yep. Um, uh, um, go ahead, bud. But you can afford one of those. You know, if you're gonna lay an egg, pick the good week to lay an egg. Yeah. Well, I yeah. I think I think you might see those two teams again in the AFC oh, playoffs man. down the road. I. Yeah. Um, and you know what? And that, Sometimes look at look at the Bucks last year. They took right. two, two ass kickings by the Saints. But you know when you beat them, right. the most important time in the yep. playoffs. So if the yep. Chargers can rebound and say, "Hey, we got the plan to beat Baltimore," and when it when it yeah. counts, who cares? Right, They're not division opponents, so they won't see each other. No, again. They won't see each other again. Yep. But I'm just saying. I mean, you look last no, year. No, absolutely. The day when they, what they, you know, they. I remember yep. the game that they play here in Tampa. 
Yeah, like, New Orleans kicked their asses right here in 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 the, right. in, in the Bucks, yeah. you know, home. And they kicked them. They kicked their asses both times, both man. Times. Yeah, and yeah. And it looked and they yeah. looked ugly. It was yeah. ugly, and it was yeah. ugly early in both games. Yep, yep. So and somehow, some way in the playoffs, they found the right, right combination of scheme, and they scored enough touchdowns to take the Saints yep. out. Yep. And that's you what know? I said going. I said that going into the into that game is, I guess everybody was picking New Orleans. Like, nope. You don't keep Tom Brady down three times in a single season. Nope. Yeah. Stay the on the way. The only, uh, the only undefeated team left, 37-14, Arizona beats Cleveland. Um, that was with their coaching staff on COVID, I think. Right. Which was out because uh, of COVID. Um, yeah. So they look good. Arizona looks good. Arizona, Arizona looks – Arizona, looks, Arizona looks, looks dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not a team that I thought was going to be a very the, the 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 biggest surprise so far this year. I I would say, bud, that my my thoughts on them they were the dark horse to win the NFC West because yeah. I know the Rams are there, I know the 49ers are there. I just thought yeah, maybe Seattle. on an outside poke in Seattle that Arizona would be that dark horse that no one planned on them. Yeah, winning. and I really yeah. think what they're doing is. They're trying to get all their cards in a row and try to win before uh-huh. they gotta pay Kyler Murray. It's big boy country. Right. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> they that gotta next get year or the year after next. I think it's the year after next. So yeah, I think it's the twenty twenty I think twenty twenty three is when he's when he's due. Yeah. So and, he, and if he keeps playing like this, he's gonna get big boy money. Uh huh. Real quick. Um no. the other team that's playing tonight, the uh, Broncos lost thirty four twenty four. To the Raiders, so the Raiders win their first game without John no, Gruden. No. Um, the second pro Gruden era. Yep. Um, the Cowboys beat the Patriots 35 29 in overtime. Oh, what, a, what a heartbreaking loss. It was a what heartbreaking, a heartbreaking loss. loss. I mean, after I, Matt Jones throws that pick six, right? Yeah. Comes back on the next play and throws an absolute yeah, dime. Yeah. Yeah, absolute dime. Yep. And then the defense, yet again, and again, a New England defense pisses away a win. Well, I, I, in all honesty, but I think right now the Patriots should be four and two and not two and four. But the coulda yeah. woulda snubs are, you know, yep. that's what it is. If if ifs and nuts were can't if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Correct. Correct. Oh. The uh, Sunday night game was the Steelers beating the Seahawks twenty three to twenty. Uh, that was a field goal, I think. Yeah. In, that game. in overtime. J.J. Watt forced a fumble late in that game. T.J. Yep. Or T.J. I'm sorry, yeah. T.J. Watt. I said J.J. Watt's in Arizona. Yep. Um, and then the Monday night game was also a good game. And I don't understand. You're on you, – you, you're you fourth and one near the goal line. You're down by a field goal yeah. line. Kick it. I, I would have just kicked time. it. I would have kicked it. Kicked yeah. it for overtime. Instead, you go for it. Josh Allen. Uh, if you're going to if you're gonna go for it, that wasn't the call. No, but then, if you're gonna go then, for it, their coach, their coach said that I, it was in his hands no matter what. That's what he said. I would give, I would, I would do that play ten times over again and let Josh have the ball. Right. Too. I just didn't like that play. I didn't like the, the play call to have him come to the left. Yeah, I, I, I think you just go, you just go straight ahead. Just go straight ahead. If you don't get it, you don't get it. But when when you try to go left, right, when you try to go when you try to go laterally instead of vertically. That that allows more defensive penetration, which is absolutely what the uh, other team got. Titans, yeah. the Titans, Titans got. Yeah, and um, and Buffalo has some some defensive issues they need to iron out. Yeah, yep. Uh, you agree. can't give up a seventy five yard rushing t- or seventy eight yard rushing touchdown to Derrick Henry. Right, right. No, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry is a bruising back. You know, he, he's a hit the hole and fall forward kind of guy. And right. you give him, you know, you give him the second, you know, once you get to the, once, once he gets to the second level and he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was. Mm. <laughs> right. All right. So we can go ahead. We'll go to this week's games. Uh, to start the one o'clock game. You have Washington at Green Bay. The line is seven and a half. Uh, with the Packers, the over under is forty eight and a half. I like the Packers. I like the points. I like the under. 
Under? Okay. Packers all the way. Okay. Um, the next 1 o'clock game is in Nashville, Kansas City versus uh, the Titans. Obviously, the line is 4.5 point favorite for the Chiefs. The over-under is 57.5. Give me Tennessee. Give me Tennessee outright. Tennessee outright. Kansas City, okay. Um, or I mean Tennessee. Sorry, I meant Tennessee. Okay. The next one is Atlanta at Miami. The Falcons are a two and a half point favorite, with the over under being forty seven and a half. I like the Falcons. I think Miami's in turnover or er, turmoil. I think you know what's going to happen. I think this is the time that Mr. Kyle Pitt starts to shine. Look out for him in the second. Yeah, half. I, I think. I think that I think this is this is a make it or break it game for Tua. Yep. Yeah. Yep. If he has a bad game, he's gone on Monday morning. Yeah. The next, yeah. The next game is the Jets at the Patriots. The Patriots are a seven point favorite, with the over under being forty two and a half. I like New England. I don't like. I think New England, but the Jets cover. Yeah. Give me the under. Yeah. Yes, New England, but Jets will cover. Um, the next one is Carolina at the Giants. The Panthers are a three-point favorite, with the over/under being forty-three even. Not inspired for Carolina. Mm. Yeah, I like Carolina. Yeah. I think they will cover. And I like, and you said forty-three even. Forty-three even is correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm, I don't know if the Jets can score, or the Giants can score ten. Yeah. Hmm. I like I like the under. All right. Um, the next game is Cincinnati at Baltimore. The line is six and a half, uh, uh, favoring Baltimore. The over under is forty six and a half. That's I a that's my game. That's my upset special of the week. I like Cincinnati going no, to Baltimore not. and steal one. Yeah. They are a surprise team this year. I mean, I didn't think that they was going to be this good. Everybody said I was stupid because I thought that taking Jamar Chase was a better pick than taking. Penny Swell. But everybody's like, no, that's a stupid pick. You, 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 your quarterback got his knee absolutely destroyed last year. What are they know? Of, uh, not enough, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I like I like that pick because I thought you give Joe you give Joe Burrow somebody to throw to. Joe yeah. Burrow's not with the ball nearly as long, which makes your offensive line that much better. You can take an average offensive line and make them better by giving your quarterback somebody to quick throw to, which, you know, those defensive linemen can't get that that rush. You're not holding that ball as long. I'm still going with the Ravens, though. Yeah, if, I do. Lamar, okay. if Lamar sees on this game, it's gonna it's gonna be you know it's gonna be a hell of a game for the Ravens. The oh, it's next, gonna be a hell of a game no matter what. Next game is the, it starts the four it starts the afternoon games. It's excuse me, Philadelphia at uh, Vegas. The Raiders are a three-point favorite. The over/under being an even forty-nine. Raiders, uh, yeah, Raiders. But I think the Eagles will cover. I know three points is a lot to cover. Yeah. Um, the next Such a game, tight line. The next game is the zero and six Lions visiting the five and one Rams. So that means Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff yeah, playing against their former teams. Yeah, Rams right. are. 16 point favorite with the over yeah. 50 and a half. Give me the Rams, give me the points, and give me the over. Yeah. Stafford goes yeah. off, he throws six First touchdowns. Okay. Stafford's going to have a monster game. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next game is Houston at the 6 0 Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals are a 17 and a half point favorite with the over under being 47. 17 and a half point favorite? 17 and a half points. Yeah. 1 7? One seven. Holy shit. One Holy shit. Seventeen and a half is the line. Holy yep. shit. Yeah, that's um line. that's where yeah. is it? Is it in Arizona? It's in Arizona. It's in Glendale. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely that's a that's a lot of that. That's a what was the what was the over under? Over under is forty seven and a half. <laughs> Ooh. So to get to forty seven and a half. Both teams have to score a minimum of 24. I could see Arizona scoring 47 by themselves. <laughs> yeah, I could see that too. <laughs> it's another, you got another revenge game going on there yep. with uh, DJ uh, Watt. J. J. Watt. Watt and um, the receiver there. Oh, um, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, God, that's a tough. I think that's the biggest I, line I, of this week, I think. is that's I think that's, that's one of the biggest lines I've seen in the NFL. Yes. Yeah. I, I, oh, I like it, though. I, I, I give me the, give me the, give me the Cardinals, give me the points, and uh, give me the over. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. That's that's gonna be. It's a tall ask, but I think they can get it done. Yeah. Oh yeah. No that's question. crazy. Uh, that's crazy, man. The next um, game is Chicago at Tampa Bay. The Bucks are a twelve and a half point favorite with the over under being an even forty seven. Tampa. I like the Bucks. I think. Mm, I think Chicago will cover. The Tampa Bay defense isn't as good as it was last year, um, and I like the uh, I like the over. Okay. Um, the eight o'clock game is the Indianapolis Colts at the San Francisco 49ers. The line is four in favor of the 49ers. The over under is an even forty four. Both teams are atrocious, but I think I can go the 49ers though. Oh, it depends on which Carson Wentz shows up. Well, would the real Carson Wentz stand up? There you go. Yeah, I know, right? Just I kind of like the I kind of like the Cardinals or the Colts to go into San Francisco and steal one. Yeah, okay. Give me the Colts. Give me the Colts straight up. And then the Monday night game is the Saints at the Seahawks. The Saints are a four point four and a half point favorite with the over under being forty two and a half. Saints. The Saints are a favorite on the road. On the road. Wow, in Seattle. In Seattle. Yeah, I like the Saints. I like the points. And what was the what was the uh, over under? Forty two and a half. Uh, yeah, give me the over. All right. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm good with that. And that would be the NFL. Do you guys want to jump to college football? Let's do it. We can talk hockey or Ooh. baseball before we get to college football. We can talk baseball. Yeah. MLB. Okay. I have a article here about the Rays, who are now out of the playoffs. Um, here is an article written in what they call the TBT. It's a free newspaper that they air, that they show every week, and it the, the title of the article seeks Rays seek state funds. Uh, the oh, Rays wow. potential move to a stadium in Ebor. Now, if you guys do not know Tampa, Tampa is there's a little uh, cove called Ebor City. Uh, Ebor yeah. City is one of the oldest cities in Florida. It was around during when the uh, when the Cubans first came here uh, that they made the city what it is. Uh, there was a lot uh, of crime going through here. That was a lot of the crime in Ebor. Uh, Ebor mm-hmm. City is a, a um, what you might call a nightclub city. A lot of nightclubs mm-hmm. there, a lot of crime there. That's what it is. But anyway, mm-hmm. long story short. It says Florida Senate President Wilson Simpson says the Rays representative spoke to him about a month ago about an unspecified stadium site in Ebor and the likelihood that the state aid would be needed for infrastructure costs because Stu Sternberg is an asshole and doesn't want to pay for anything. I didn't right. say that out loud, did I? I'm sorry, I did say that out loud. Yeah, I think you did. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, no, no chance of getting him on the show anytime soon. Uh, to access mm. the the work includes making access to Ebor City uh, easier via a sixty six point eight million dollar project to build a new I four exit ramp. Now, what the biggest complaint before we get into baseball talk is sure. with the Rays is the problem with the Rays and has been for a while is there's not a lot of like if you guys you got you know Lewis can tell you too when you yes. go to Yankee Stadium. What is around Yankee Stadium? There's bars. Everything. Exactly. Everything. You, go to Fenway Park. you go to Fenway Park in Boston, same way. Yeah. Right. What I'm getting at is where Tropicana Field is located, because I've been a couple times, you have to go a mile and a half to get to anything in downtown St. Pete. There's well, right. around the state. There's one bar around the whole stadium, and that's it. So you have to go a mile and a half. And guess what? In Florida, we don't have any public transportation. We have nothing. We right. don't have a train, right. we don't have a bus, nothing. I mean, we no. do have a bus system, but it sucks. So right. it it and, and, for that. And once you get outside the big city, so once you get outside Miami, Jacksonville, Orlando, right. yeah. it all goes yeah. away. Yeah, exactly. Yep. As soon as you get out in the boonies, you, you get a couple miles outside, and, you know, they're not running the bus. The buses aren't going to run. Right. 
and, and that's the thing about LA, New York, Chicago, Detroit, Boston, yeah. Detroit. Boston Philly. Yeah. The, yep. There's public transportation. There's shuttles everywhere. So even if you don't, you know, even, you know, I say your hotel is a mile from the stadium. Even Ann Arbor, and, and where where the Wolverines call home, um, there's there's shuttles to and from hotels all around the area to yes. the to the stadium. Right. So you you get out, you get your hotel room in Ann Arbor, and you get up at nine o'clock and you get on the shuttle and you, you shuttle right to the stadium. You don't have to even worry about parking. You just leave your car, lock your car up, leave your car at the hotel, yes. and shuttle. It's a 20-minute shuttle ride. That's what me and my mom did when we went to the Red Wings game a couple of years ago. We uh-huh. start, We parked at the cafe, which was Hockey Town Cafe in Detroit. It's a 5-10-minute ca- shuttle ride from Hockey Town right down to the stadium. And you literally get off and walk up the stairs and go right on into the – into the end of the arena. And I think that's, I think that's kind of, kind of what you were alluding to there with Tampa Bay, at least with the, with Tropicana field. I don't know so much, so much about Raymond. Can you talk about Raymond James there? Is that, is that any well, different? Uh, it, it is, it is different. <laughs> Raymond James is different because again, when you leave Raymond James stadium down Del Navery, the, the, the road that um, Raymond James stadium is on is bars, restaurants, strip clubs. That's what, Del Navery basically is. Um, so Tropicana Field does not have that access. Um, it's out in the middle of nowhere then. Yeah. It, it's yeah, it's in it's it's in down it's in downtown St. Pete, but it's not near the what they call the Mecca of mm-hmm. what right. you have as far as what you need. Just like you were just saying, but when I went, I've gone to Sunrise where the Panthers play, and mm-hmm. we stayed at a hotel about 15 minutes away. The shuttle takes us to the outlet mall right across the street from the stadium. So they would drop you off and pick you up from that outlet mall. So right. You could go and pick it up, and then you go back to yeah. some location. They would take you back to the hotel. And that's you know, that's we exactly. Don't have, we don't have that here. They don't have that kind of capability in St. Pete. They don't have that kind of transportation in St. Pete. Right. And that's you know, exactly – that's exactly – Or whatever. Yeah. Right. You just – and I, I haven't been to Little Caesars, but at the Joe – you, you come out the main entrance. You go down that big flight of stairs, yeah. and you got Cobo. You, you you stand you stand there and you wait for the show. Oh yeah, that's right. You've been to the job. You got Cobo Hall right there, so you yeah, can yeah. walk through the hall to get back out into the city. Yep. I mean, I, when I went to the game at the Joe before it closed down, they lost the Oilers that night. <laughs> but um, uh, we lost Montreal the night that I went. They, they um, when you walk through Cobo Hall, obviously there's security walking through there, but. You walk right. right up to the main area of the where Coba Hall hit the Coba's at the end of the street, and now you're in downtown Detroit, and you got hotels right. and all that stuff straight hotels, ahead. Hotels, bars, nightclubs, right. all so the casinos are within. Correct. Yeah, it's all within. They're, they're, if they're not within walking distance, they're they're definitely within an Uber. Right. Exactly. You, you, you grab it. I say, you know, that's one of the reasons why the Wings um, shifted their their Sunday games from seven to five. And, and going back to what you're saying about the Rays, like, there's nothing to do. No. Even if you have a Sunday afternoon baseball game, which a lot of baseball games are played on Sunday afternoon, um, you know you have a one o'clock, you have a one o'clock first pitch. Game's over by four thirty, and maybe five o'clock if it goes a little bit longer. Um, there's still four or five hours before you got to get home, go to bed. If you live in the if you live in the Tampa Bay area, you know if you're not if you're not commuting from two or three hours away. If you live right there, it's you know, you you know what's there to do, you know. Right. You have to get you have to go back into Tampa Bay proper before yeah. you can get. To, and I think that's the big. Even if you even if they were to create it, you know, even if they were go to Ebron or or whatever you Ebor. said the name of the other. Ebor City. Igor. Ebor. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah. You know, what's there to do in Ebor? Well, you have nightclubs yeah. and bars. Oh, okay. Um, it, it would make more sense, but for them to move to Ebor, they actually had a stadium site mm. already ready to go. But what ended up happening again is Sue Sternberg wanted money, public money, to be put into the stadium. Right. Because I think the stadium was going to be one or close to a billion dollars, I think is what they mm. were talking about. Wow. And he wow. was only going to put up $150 million of it. So you do you do yeah, the if math. You, you do that. That's a 
if you're gonna ask the entire state of Florida to fund that, they're gonna take you tell you to take a flying F at a rolling donut. Well, oh, yeah, on, top, yeah. on top of that, if you want to look at it, the reason why he doesn't want to offer more money is because he looks to see what happened in Miami. They built a brand new stadium for the Marlins in Miami. Right. The first year it was filled. After that, no one shows up to a Marlins game. The Marlins actually have worse attendance mm. than the Rays do. So I'm just right. you no, know, he's yeah. looking at see again, we we can sit here and call him an a-hole or whatever you name in the book. At the end of the day, like you were just talking about senior, you're a businessman. You know yeah. you're not gonna spend your money when you know you're not gonna make it back. So why right. would you go ahead and spend money when you know you're not? It's not like New York or Boston when you build a new stadium, you're gonna fill it. No matter right. if the Yankees or the Red Sox suck, you're still gonna fill it because of the tradition of those two teams. Yeah. The Rays you know, don't have tradition yet. Right. So, and you're not, you know, even if even if New York or Boston are terrible yeah. for a given year, you may, yeah. you you know, you're at least going to sell it on the weekend. You're going right. to sell it on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Correct. That's correct. And you'll right. probably get thirty or forty thousand for the rest of the week too. I mean, I think at the end of the year, the end of the year, the last I think six home games, the Rays were offering ten dollar tickets just mm. to get people to come. Cheap seats. Cheap seats. No, are we talking ten dollars? Ten dollars in level one, not wow. ten dollars in the nosebleed section. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Uh, yep. Ten dollars down the right field, down the lines. Yeah. In the in the lower bowl. In the lower bowl. Yep. Ooh. Just to fill it in. Yep. Wow. That's so, brutal. That's the, brutal for a team that's good. The other, I mean, other than the, other than the the playoffs going on right now, the big thing is, did you guys hear that? that in uh, minor league baseball, the major league teams are now going to be responsible for housing their minor league yes, players. Yes, I did that's, see that. That's yep. great news for minor league baseball. Yeah, it's huge for minor league baseball. Yep, absolutely. It's about mm. time. Those guys yeah. struggle to make ends meet. They yep. have to get second jobs. They have to get a regular nine-to-five job just to make yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so now they don't have to yeah. worry about living anymore. Because housing. Yep. Major league baseball is going to pay for it. So that's fine. I mean, that's great. Finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was a good story I got to catch up on. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a great Aaron, story. Aaron Boone got a three-year extension that came up. Yeah, how do you feel about that, Lou? You know, if George was still alive, he wouldn't have that. I, I, mean, I, I, Aaron, I would have been, Aaron would have been, you know, gone. I mean, we got it. but his son doesn't seem to be like that. He's there. He, has, he has more faith, you know. I think, and I, I, I kind of feel like he earned he, I, I think three years was too much. I would have given him one more. I think with the way yeah. they bounced back and came back and made the playoffs, even though they didn't do anything in the playoffs, I think they at least earned that. He at least earned one more year. Yes. Right. Um, with with the injury bug that's been plaguing them for the last couple of years, I wouldn't totally mm-hmm. give up on him just yet, but I, 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 I understand the feeling. I, 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 I totally get it. Because I feel the same way about a certain coach in Detroit, but <laughs> I, I, I felt like he should have been. I, I felt like he should have been fired five years ago, but that's just me. Uh, I get um, but I, 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 you know, for me, the the big thing about bringing Boone back compared to getting rid of him, bringing somebody new in, is the fact that they did make a playoff run, yeah. and they made some moves to get better, and they got better. And so, right. I, I think that I think that managing being a baseball a manager in baseball is the most difficult managerial position in sports, coaching position in sports, because it's so there's so little that you can control. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you you know with football or baseball or basketball, you know you design plays. You know you have strategies, and you you know you have to you know. It, you have to really be a, a great coach can take average players and, and, and win a championship with them. With baseball, you need great players to make a to be a competitive team. Um, and and so so with baseball being such a, a fickle sport where you can have you know if you have part of your lineup go cold for a week, you can lose four straight games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
and and there's not so there's there's only so much you can do about it. There's only so many things you can try and tweak. Uh, if your guys aren't hitting, if you, if you're not you know if your pitchers aren't pitching, it really it becomes very easy to get to go in a go into a skit. Um, and you really need great players to be able to be a great manager in baseball. You know, look at look at um, or what's his name? The the, the coach of the uh, the the Cubs used to be in uh, used to be in Tampa. Oh, Joe Madden. Not, uh, Joe Madden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always coming with Joe Morgan, but I knew that wasn't right. <laughs> or Joe Madden, you know, he leads the leads Tampa Bay to a World Series and um, two thousand eight. Yeah, and and you know, they end up losing to Philly in five games. But you know he takes that team as that as that team starts to get old, and they start to you know they start to age out, and there isn't anybody coming in behind them. They fire Joe, they fire him, and it takes them six years to get back to prominence. You know then then they, then the Cubs bring him in, he, he wins the World Series with them, and um, they 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 struggle for a year or two, fire him sell everything off and start all over again you know and look at look at what he's doing in, in he's got two stars in 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 la and nothing else yep. and you you've got to have talent throughout your lineup and in your in your in your in your pitching staff you know i, I think that i think that being a baseball manager is so much more difficult than coaching any other sport where where with with Baseball or football or basketball uh, or hockey. Um, I know I said baseball. I didn't mean to. I meant hockey. You 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 know you have you're drawing up plays. You're you're coaching on the fly. You're you're giving your guys. You're making adjustments and you're you're setting things up. But with baseball. You're just hoping your guys can make contact, mm -hmm. yeah. and it, it's there's a lot more feel and touch that goes into being a baseball manager, and there's a lot of you know you can look at you know all the analytics you you want you can look at all the analytics you know, and if you know, your small ball and and Billy Bean and mm -hmm. and Oakland but they never won a title because they just didn't have the talent at sure. the top of you know they didn't they didn't have you know, you can you can get crafty, you can get creative, and you can find a guy in the you know in some grapefruit league or some bush league out there playing softball, and you can have a great season. But if it's not sustainable, and if if you only have one or two of those guys, and you don't have enough of those guys, you 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 manage so your hair falls out, and you're not gonna be you're you're mm. gonna be no better than five hundred. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, like I said, uh, right now the Dodgers are up four to two. Oh. The bottom of the third with two outs and two runners on. Um, and then again, the Red Sox Astros are tomorrow night in Houston. Uh, so that will again the, the Astros can wrap it up tomorrow night, or will the Red Sox force a game seven? Either way, it's going to be in Houston. Well, hope not. The other, right? Um, Did you uh, hear about that plane crash? Plane crash. Yeah, there's a little commuter plane, a little little uh, uh, private jet that was on the way to the Boston, on the way to Boston, out of Houston the other day. And uh, cra uh, skidded off the runway and burst into flames. Oh. Everybody walked away. Well, that's the good news, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Do you guys want to jump to uh, college football? I got some yeah. things outside of going through the uh, the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the first thing I wanted to bring up was. It looks like Florida, Michigan, and Ohio State players have all ink deals with Outback Steakhouse. That's great. Really? Uh, Anthony Richardson, Blake Corman, and CJ Stroud have all inked NIL deals with Outback Steakhouse. I popped up on uh, 247 Sports the other day. So those three players have done that. Uh, the American Athletic Conference. Yeah. 
expanded there today. They got six new teams coming to the conference. Uh, UAB, conference dead. Yeah, UAB, um, UTSA. Uh, I forget the other, the other four that are there. Um, yeah. Um, Nick Rolovich, coach of Washington State, has been fired due to his uh, COVID, non-COVID uh, vaccine. Non-compliance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the um, Dick Vitale, this is sad. Dick Vitale has been diagnosed with lymphoma. Uh, so he is fighting that disease. Oh, my God. If we lose Dick Vitale, that would not be great. Uh, so prayers out to Dick and his family. Um, other than that, I mean, um, there was Don Staley becomes the highest paid women's basketball coach. She inked a seven year, $224 million contract with South Carolina. Wow. So, congratulations to I wrote an article about her mm. <laughs> for a while back. Um, but yeah, um, she got a new seven year deal. She becomes the highest paid women's college basketball coach. Um, mm. Other than that, guys, we can go back through the scores from last week. Um, starting back on Friday, Oregon, who was number nine, um, beat Cal 24-17. Um, what a game that was. Yeah. yeah. San Diego State beat San Jose State 19-13. That was in overtime. Yes. Yeah, that was a good game, too. Um, Georgia uh, beat Kentucky 30-13. to Georgia's the number mm -hmm. one in the country. Uh, yeah, Hunter, I think for me, Purdue upsets Iowa twenty-four to seven at home. Yeah, um, Cincinnati drops fifty-six on UCF, fifty-six twenty-one. That that made me a happy camper. Yes. Uh, Oklahoma beat TCU fifty-two thirty-one. Not having a camper for me. Alabama crushed Mississippi State forty-nine to nine. Mm -hmm. um, Michigan State beat Indiana twenty to fifteen. Uh, Oklahoma State beat Texas 32 24. Sorry about that. Uh, 32 to 24. Ole Miss beat uh, Tennessee 31 uh, Yeah, here's oh, what a th what's that? Wow, what the, I mean, what the hell was that with that incident? I mean, really, to get 20 minutes to, to figure it out, and, and the fans were going ballistic. and Lane Kiffin even got even got hurt with a, yeah, with a golf ball. Ball. Totally they ridiculous got, and uncalled for. I mean, I mean, they got they got fined two hundred fifty thousand dollars. University. Only said they would have gave him twenty five twenty five million for that. And again, guys, just proves my point of why I hate Tennessee. <laughs> like this, the ridiculous mom of the week. Yeah, Auburn. Yeah, beat, definitely. Auburn upset Arkansas forty eight twenty three. Mm. Um, Utah beat. Arizona State 35-21. Mm. Uh, Baylor beat BYU 38-24. Uh, the game that made me vomit, LSU beat Florida 49-42. Um, mm. yeah. Texas A&M beat Missouri 35-14 after beating Alabama the week before. And NC State beat Boston College 33-7. to um, The other game that made me vomit was the USF game. <laughs> When they were up by 11 points going into the fourth quarter and let Tulsa score 12 points to lose by one point, 32-31. Oh, they're favored this week against Temple. Temple's not a good football team either, but we'll, I guarantee you that game will be a lot closer than it, a lot of people will put it out to be. Temple's a loser. Yeah. So we already had two games this week. or The game going on right now, SMU is undefeated. Is up 31 13 over Tulane. And Appalachian State beat Coastal Carolina 30 to 27 on yesterday. Yes. Did yeah. not know that. Oh, let me hear. Is it too late or too lame? Oh. <laughs> oh. Totally lame. Uh, so the first game is the number two Cincinnati Bearcats at the Naval Academy. Cincinnati's a 28 point favorite with the over under being 48 and a half. Against who? Navy. It's Cincy versus Navy. Oh yeah, give me, give me Cincinnati. Give me the points. Give me the over. Cincy wins, but Navy covers. Navy covers. Okay. Really? Um, the game. Other game at noon is number three Oklahoma at Kansas. 
The Sooners are a 38 and a half point favorite with the over under being 66 and a half. Yeah. Oklahoma, the over and the points. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. The other game that's coming up is the number six Wolverines at home against Northwestern. The Wolverines are a 23 and a half point favorite with the over under being an even 51. Michigan wins, but Northern, but, um, Northwestern covers. Northwestern covers, yes. That's going to yeah. be close, a lot of people think. Yeah. I don't know. Northwesterns look terrible. I'm scared. Uh, it's definitely it's a chance for a letdown going into, um, going into next week. I'm not convinced. Hey, it, it's it's a trap. It's a it's a classic trap game. Right. Okay. It's a genuine, bona fide trap game. It's the big one comes up next you week. Want Jerry, this is my Monroe? Yeah, it, uh, they're playing state next week, right? Yeah. Oh, in East boy. Lansing, too. Oh, oh, they're on the road. Uh oh. Yeah, they gotta go to East Landfill. They gotta go to East Land. Yeah, they gotta go to East Landfill next week. And well, here's the thing don't look too far ahead. Michigan's it, got yeah, to win first. Don't look too that's far ahead. A, that's what I'm. That's the that's a, a, a definition of a trap game. Yeah. Definition of a trap game. Supposed to win going away. Right. The 23 point favorites with an over under of 50 should win going away. Northwestern's one and five. I win six. They're terrible. And uh, Northwestern's three and three. They're one and two in the Big Ten. Mm. Uh, I didn't realize. I thought they were a lot worse than that. But they got absolutely devastated and demolished by Nebraska a couple weeks ago. And we struggled against Nebraska two weeks ago. Um, yeah, it's 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 every everything that you look for in track game, mm-hmm. and yeah, mm, um, I never, mm. the next one, guys, is Illinois at Penn State. Uh, the Nittany Lions are a twenty-three point favorite with the over/under being forty-five and a half. Oh, Illinois at Penn State. Uh, yeah, I like Penn State. Penn State. I like- yeah, Penn State. What was the what was the um what was oh, the line? Uh, the line is twenty three. Penn State's a twenty three point favorite. Mm. Yeah. And then yeah, I who Penn uh, State has coming up. Um, the next game at uh, noon is the number sixteen Demon Deacons. Ooh, uh, that's a trap game point. too. Against Army, the uh, the Demon Deacons are a three point favorite with the over under being fifty two and a half. I'll take Army. So no, I'm going to take Army. Army upsets. Uh, Army upsets and knocks the Demon Deacons off the uh, out of the ranks of the unbeaten. Yeah. All right. Wake Forest is basketball, not football. The uh, the three o'clock game is the Badgers versus the Boilermakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wisconsin's a three and a half point favorite with the over under being forty and a half. They're in. They're playing in Purdue, so they're in West Lafayette. Yeah. They're in West Lafayette. Cheese? I'm sorry. Anybody want some cheese? <laughs> as long as it's boiled. As long as it's boiled. <laughs> um, oh, I like Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Okay. I'm gonna go with the home team. No, 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 home cooking. I'm gonna take the. Pretty, I'm gonna take the. Pretty. I I I still I still like Penn State, but it, that's another trap game. Yeah. Because next week, next week they got Ohio State. Oh, it is a trap game. Okay. Yeah. They got They got to go. They got to go on the road to Columbus. They got to go on the road to Columbus. So. All right. Uh, the next game is the number eight Oklahoma State Cowboys on the road in Ames to play the Iowa State Cyclones. Um, it's a seven-point favorite for Iowa State. It's a seven-point. Iowa favorite. State's the fave. They're the fave. Oh, wow. Over under being forty-seven. I think that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. Ah. Uh, I, I like Oklahoma State. I was gonna say yeah. Oklahoma State. Iowa State. Iowa State. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, the next game is the number ten Ducks on the road against the Bruins in the Rose Bowl. Uh, UCLA is a one point favorite with the over under being sixty and a half. Wow. 
Oh, okay. Who they got? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, give me the ducks. ducks. Wah, wah, wah. Give me the ducks. ducks. Yeah, I'm taking. I'm taking uh, Daphne Donald and everybody else. Oh. Um, and you said sixty six. Uh, 60 and a half is the over under. 60 and a half. Oh, okay. Uh, give me the under. Okay. Um, the next 330 game is the LSU Tigers on the road in Oxford to play the Ole Miss Rebels. Ole Miss is a nine point favorite with the over under being 76. That's 76 and a half. Good. That's a lot of points. They, That's a. The, but those two points. teams are pretty good offensively. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not gonna say I, that I would take the over, but I wouldn't yeah, be surprised. Because would, to get to 76, somebody's gonna have to get in the 40s. 40s. Right. Um, or you're gonna have to have a 33, you know, 33, 32, or a 33, 34 type situation. Old yeah, Miss. I like Ole Miss too. You're saying there were nine point favorites. Nine point favorite. Yep, Ole Miss. Is I right. think I, I'll take Ole Miss, but LSU covers. Okay. I'll um, buy that. I'll buy that. The next game is the Don't you buy it for a dollar? Four and two Clemson Tigers on the road against the Pitt Panthers in Heinz Ooh. Field. The Clemson. Pittsburgh is three and a half with the over under being forty eight. I like Pittsburgh. I like I Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Uh Pitts Pitts okay. one of those surprises. Pitts one of those yeah, they beat Tennessee earlier this year. Yeah. Um and Clemson's this is if you're gonna get Clemson, this is the year to get them. Yep. Yep, I agree. Uh -huh. I agree. Um, the next game is a 7 o'clock game. The uh, Tennessee Volunteers go on the road in Tuscaloosa to play the number four tied. Alabama is a 25-point favorite with the over-under being <laughs> seven. Yeah, I, want, I want Alabama. I want the points, and I want the over. <laughs> Alabama rolls. Oh, yeah, yeah Alabama. They, they're, they're playing pissed off. Yeah, that's not a team you want to face playing. That's not that's not a team you want to get coming off a loss, man. No, no, no. no. Ugh. I know. Alabama, I know. We're Alabama, Alabama won last week, but the I, I was I was just about to say I know we're two yeah. weeks removed from yeah. that loss, but A and M loss. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, yeah. I'm not crazy about Bama's defense this year. There are some. Yeah, Bama I mean, does have some issues on the defensive side. Yes, they do. I'm not crazy about about. Uh, Tennessee's defense either. I think the best I team. The, I think the best team in the country is Georgia. I, Georgia. I, and I think it's Georgia. Uh, <laughs> um, right now, right well, now, right now. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, looking at this, looking at Alabama's schedule, this is the first game that home they've had since the loss. Okay. Um, yeah, they're gonna want. They're gonna come out. They're gonna play fast. They're gonna play hard. They're gonna play fired up. For their home fans, it, I know, just hope that they annihilate Tennessee. So that's all I think. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. No problem. Um, the next guy, the next game, guys, is at 7 p.m. It's the number 22 San Diego State on the road to play Air Force at the at the Air Force Ooh, Academy. That's an easy one. Um, Air Force is a three point favorite with the over under being 39. Huh. I like Air Force. I'll take Air Force the points and the under. The San Diego goes. State. Okay. Um. The next game is at 7 p.m., and it's the UTSA. That's University of Texas, San Antonio, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yes, um, yes. They're on the road against uh, Louisiana Tech. Uh, the USTA is a six-and-a-half point favorite with the over-under being 59-and-a-half. Texas. Yeah, I would say yeah. USTA in that one. They're 7-0 yeah. so far this season. So I think they continue to be undefeated after this week. Agreed. Um, the 7:30 game is the Ohio State Buckeyes on the road in Bloomington to play the Indiana Hoosiers. Oh, the the Buckeyes are a 21 point favorite with the over under being 59 and a half. Ohio oh, State's gonna kill. Indiana's given them kind of some heartache recently. I, yeah, I, I'm not gonna say I, I'm not gonna say Ohio State's not gonna. Win. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take Indiana win outright, but they'll cover. Yeah, I would say they'll cover. I would okay. say that too. Um, the 7:30 game is the USC Trojans on the road in South in uh, South Bend to play the Irish. Uh, the Notre Dame is a seven-point favorite, with the over/under being 58. Irish SC SC. Okay. Yep. 
one. All right. Uh, 730 at College Station. The South Carolina Gamecocks are on the road to play the Aggies, Texas A&M. The Aggies are a 19-and-a-half point favorite with the over under 45. A&M. A&M over and, yeah. Okay. A&M the points in the over. The number 18 NC State Wolfpack are on the road in Coral Gables to play the Miami Hurricanes. The line is three and a half for the Wolfpack, with the over under yeah. being 53. Uh, I like the I like the Wolfpack. I like the um, they'll cover, and okay. I want the under. All right, that's, that's, that's the top yeah. 25. I want to see something real quick. If someone told me that USF was a favorite. I want to see if that's actually true. Let's see what the line is on here because I want to see. Yes, they are. The line is two and a half. What? Two and a half. The over-under is 55. I got to ask you guys. I'm going to be at that game personally. Does When's the, is that a noon kick? It's at, No, it's at 7 o'clock. Oh, it's, it's a, a late kick. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh-huh. It's a 7 p.m. Game. Yeah. Oh, it's the little, it's little one's birthday, so I probably won't watch anything but the Michigan game. Um, I probably won't even watch it. I'll probably have it on in my earbuds. I'll just have it in my ear in the background noise. Um, oof. Uh, USF, two and a half. Where are they? Are they in Florida? Oh, yeah, they are in Florida because you're going to be there. Um, SF. Yeah, I like SF. Okay, all right. That, uh, the, other, the other game in the, uh, in the American is... Uh, Eastern Carolina is on the road to play the 5-1 and one Houston Cougars. The line is 13.5 for Houston and an over-under of 57.5. Houston wins. Houston. Okay. Who, who are they? Houston and who? Uh, East, East, Carolina. East Carolina, the Pirates. Oh, uh, yeah, Houston. Yeah, Houston. East now, Carolina is not as good as they were a couple years ago. No. I'm gonna, I'll, t- I'll take USF to cover. I don't think that – I think I'll take the under. I don't see – them scoring 55 total points between each other. <laughs> no, I agree. I, I, I mean, I'm not that. Not even on a good day. USF like scored 30. 31 last week, but I don't. I don't see that happening. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like 17, 20, 13, 10, yeah. something like that. Yeah. The the other game, guys. Memphis, the Tigers are on the road at the Bounce House in Orlando to play UCF. The line is one and a half for Memphis. the Tigers. The over under 63 and a half. Memphis. Memphis. It's basically a push at that point. Why well, fits the cover? Because if it was one and a half, one and a half, yeah, one and a half to cover. It's pretty much. It's pretty much. That's about all you can. You can't get any closer to a push than that. Right. Right. I mean, you can only if you win by one. I mean, that would be a bad beat. Ugh. The only yeah. game, guys, in the Big Ten that is not a top twenty-five matchup. Would be uh, Maryland on the road in Minneapolis to play the Golden Gophers. Minnesota is a four and a half point favorite with the over under yeah. fifty four and a half. Give me Minnesota. Give me the points and give me the under. Yeah. All right. Gophers. The uh, the Gators don't play this week after their embarrassment. I kind of thought so. LSU, uh, but guess who they get to play next week? Oh, that's right, they get to play Georgia. On the road. Oh, in Canada, the cool. neutral. they got to go between oh, the head. They got to go to. Game they got to go hard. between the edges next week. They're gonna get slaughtered in Jacksonville. Oh, that, that, why is it in Jackson? God, I hate no, neutral site games. It's been yeah, a neutral site game for a long time. There's nothing like going between the hedges or going to the swamp. God, I hate neutral site games in the. I'll be in the season. swamp later next month. I can't wait. Can't wait to see them play in Florida State. How do you think that game's going to go? It's going to be closer than I thought it was during the first part of the season. Yeah. Florida can't stop anybody on defense. So And and and, and FSU started to look good the last few weeks. Yeah. After so, a real – after what, what would you say, a slow start? I would say no so. start. I think I I don't think you got to – I think you were in reverse. I think FSU was in reverse. Speaking yeah. of – Speaking of FSU, let's look at who they're playing this week in the ACC. Let's see here. Who's FSU have? Oh, UMass. UMass. Yeah. Uh, UMass. Uh, the, the Knowles are a 35 and a half point favorite. Watch them lose. The over-under is 59 and a half um, for that game. 
they win, watch them recover. Yeah, watch them lose again. If you <laughs> match beats them, if you match beats them, they might burn that stadium down in Tallahassee. Oh, All yeah. right, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm serious. They might burn that stadium down. Didn't didn't Bobby but didn't Bobby Bowden pass away earlier this year? Yes, he did. God rest his soul. They, they they will there will be some dark magic performed. There, there will be some invocations invoked. There will oh, be black God. magic done. Brave. God, rest in soul. I. There will be. They will. There will be black magic done to bring Bobby Bond back if they lose. <laughs> back to life. He's walking yeah. again. Bobby Bowden is right. walking the the stadium. In the ghost of Bowden. Miss <laughs> Day is two thirds the third back from the grave to right the. <laughs> oh. Well, and also, guys, before we the the college football, uh, Ed Ogeron is not coming back. For LSU. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw that. Now again, there's been rumors that uh, Jimbo Fisher is going to leave. Dabo Sweeney's going to go there. Huh. Um, I don't uh, see Mount the them leaving. Um, I don't. See I've heard. Those. I've heard. I, I've heard Mel Tucker's vote name floated out there. Who is the offensive coordinator for the? Uh, Clemson Tigers. Uh, I don't know. Offhand. I forget there. He would be a good head coach to get. I don't. Oh, but do you think Scott Frost survives? Ah, uh, well, they've won some games. It's a possibility. I know, but I'm gonna say this. I know the alumni in Nebraska is not liking where that program is at right now. They're they're yeah. tired of them losing in last second fumbles or penalties or missing a field goal or whatever it might be. They're tired of seeing that. And yeah. I don't know how much more the alumni will say, you know what, we'll just buy it. We'll buy him out and we'll get another. Yeah, coach. we'll buy the bullet and go get somebody else. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Well, no longer Nebraska sucks. I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's not the 90s anymore, people. Well, here's the here's the weird thing about them. Nebraska was in the Big 12, right? They moved to the Big 10. Right. Since they've gone to the Big 10, it has not gone well for them. They have no. not they have not no. done very well since Bring back Tom Osborne as coach. God, he's like 80 now. Either is Maryland. Were, Maryland's the same way. They transfer out of the yeah. ACC. They go to the Big 10. Same thing with them. They haven't done very right. well either since entering the country. They, they, they mm -hmm. wanted to be a big money school. Yep. A lot more money in the Big 10. Oh, absolutely. Well, absolutely. And you can't compete in the Big Ten if you're not defensive. Nope. <laughs> it, it, have a good defense. You got a good defense. You're not going to win. Mm -hmm. And it's not the. Way. And the problem. The problem is, is that you know, and we talked. We talked it to death. But you know, as long as as long as there, as long as the weather is nice in Tuscaloosa, and in Athens, and in Coral Gables. And in and in at uh, Southern California, you're gonna in Texas, you know. Yes. You're gonna have a hell of a time recruiting if anywhere, everywhere. Yeah. And and you know, unless you're gonna unless you can find some some diamonds in the rough and you can knock off like Alabama, or an Ohio State, right. or Michigan, right. or Florida, or Georgia. You're gonna have a hell of a time recruiting. It's yeah. gonna be a bitch because you know why would I go to Lincoln, Nebraska? Why would I go to Minneapolis, Minnesota? Minnesota? Yep. I mean, you know, look at you know even you know even the three star kids that end up you know at places like USF or UCF. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, and that's the thing about you know we talked about recruiting in Florida. And Texas, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, you know, these places that are relatively nice in uh, October, you know, places where your daytime highs are in the mid 60s and or mid 70s, low 80s. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, Knoxville is Knoxville is is, is gorgeous this time of year. Mm -hmm. And Tuscaloosa is gorgeous this year. Miami is gorgeous this time of year, you know. You might have two a days in August when it's one hundred and eight thousand degrees out. Yeah, but yeah. but when you get into October, you get into November, and you're playing 
you know, playing Ann Arbor, playing Columbus. It is cold. It is wet. It is nasty. Or you can play in Miami, where it's never cold, <laughs> ever. Where if it gets below eighty, everything closes. Yeah, that's right. No, yeah. Yeah. It's, right. it's seven. It's seventy nine degrees out. We got ice warnings. Well, here's here's the thing. I early I woke up Monday morning after I got back from my vacation. It was seventy three degrees outside. It was so oh, nice. Jesus. It was so nice outside <laughs> because you're used yeah, to the nineties. This- so seventy right. was like, oh man, like that's great. We were in seventy three. So yeah, it was hopefully it the was, weather starts to cool down now that we've turned the calendar out of the summertime and right. It was forty three on Monday morning here. It was gorgeous. Oh. It was it's like that was, it was it was hoodie weather at, at six AM. I was like, Yeah, yeah, I'm so happy. Tickets went on sale yesterday for the outdoor game in Nashville. In, yeah. So I gotta check into that. So Right. So do I. I'm hoping. Uh any final any final thoughts, guys, before we get off here? It was minus good? twenty here. Say twenty eight? Minus tw- minus twenty. Oh minus twenty. <laughs> minus oh yeah, it was awful. I I it, was, but, I I, I, it was horrible. Twenty already. Minus twenty in the month. Of minus the twenty. Yep. Hey. <laughs> apparently, minus, apparently, apparently, apparently he I, apparently he left he left New Jersey and went to uh with Antarctica, but yeah, Antarctica, yeah. <laughs> North 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 North. It was a little better to say it was only minus two. Right. North Pole. Yeah. He went to the well, I, he, he, he saw he saw he saw a polar bear on his commute to work this you know, Monday morning. Did, yeah, an Eskimo. <laughs> he he knew it was cold. He, he knew it was cold out because all the New York politicians had their hands in their own pockets. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> they do it all year long. They do it all year long, Adam. Jersey <laughs> <laughs> too, because we're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Any, uh, any final thoughts, guys, before we get off? No, here? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Great show again. Sorry about being so late today. No, you're having fine. computer Wait, issues. Fine. fine, no worries. I mean, it, issues with my internet. They didn't even want to load up. So yeah, I I yeah, yeah. For a brief time. The pink, the pink is for breast cancer month. I know we're getting down to the end yeah. of the, yeah. October. So that's for breast cancer month. Uh, yeah. I've had some friends that have survived that. Two Very friends nice. that have survived uh, breast cancer. So, outside. Breast cancer. Yep. So, um, one that's younger than me and one that's older than me. So, there you mm. go. You know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it can affect anybody at any time. Uh, sure. That's correct. And it can affect guys as much as it can affect women. Yeah. I'll figure that is, but it can, it can, yeah. So, it's yeah, not just a female thing. It is, you know, it can, it can affect men as well. Um, wow. Cool. But I guess say, guys, um, I don't have anything. Louis, do you want to uh, talk about your show on Saturday before we get off here? Yeah, all right. Uh, Enhanced Sports Show, Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m. East Coast time. Of course, we're going to discuss the playoffs because this is the weekend before the World Series begins, which will be on Tuesday. And by the time we, if we have another show after that, we'll be in game four. Wow. So uh, keep that in mind. Um College, uh, college and pro football, of course, are predictions. Uh, we'll look at the first week of the NBA. If I could find those predictions of uh, who was going to be the best in the East and the West and the coaches stuff, I'll, I'll find that because I definitely want to discuss that. Uh, NHL, and of course, uh, for any WNBA fans out there, we'll recap the final. Some might find it surprising, some might not. Some might even, not even care at all. I think 98% <laughs> won't care though. Okay. All right, well, 97%. Guys, as as always, again, this has been the Walker Report. We are part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio, part of NGSE Sports. Remember the website, guys, it's NGSESports.com for all your current sports content. And we are being aired live on Coast to Coast Entertainment. Mm-hmm. If you're wondering why I didn't ask to do the whole uh, uh, sponsorship with NGSC, uh, guess what, guys? The app that is out there has been disabled. It's no longer in service. Uh-huh. I think the company didn't make it, um, so oh, wow. we no longer have to say the uh, the sponsorship. Um, I do have my own sponsor, CreatingZenSpace.com. Remember, guys, it's the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization, and cluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life. And remember, Zen Spaces begins with you. 
be kind to yourself and one another. And again, guys, she wanted me to regularly say she is just servicing St. Petersburg at this time. Uh, the Clearwater and Tampa Tampa areas are too far from her. So she wanted me to specify that earlier today when she sponsored our show for another two months. So she wanted me to rectify that on here. Uh, we will be back, guys, next week. Um, it will be the last show in the month of October. But we will be here um, then. Um, I, it was good, guys. Again, good show. Thanks uh, for uh, – no show last week as I was on vacation. Uh, I was right. I played golf last Thursday, so it was very, very nice uh, to be off and be on vacation. But we will, guys, be back here next week. Uh, I want to say thanks to everybody that tuned in or will be tuning in on YouTube. Uh, thank you or on Facebook too as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. No matter if you were here for uh, a second or however long you were here. I also want to say thank you to the. First responders uh, and our men and women of our armed services, thank you for your sacrifices that you do every day. And like I said, guys, we will be back next week. Until then, this has been The Walk Report. I am the sports of Bradley Walker. Everybody, have a good night. Stay safe. Get vaccinated if you want to. It's actually good if you do. Peace. Good night.